Welcome back, Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our second video, a very short video that has us practice working with the uh, recursive and the explicit formulas that we discussed in video one. Now, if you haven't had a chance to see the first video, example one, make sure you take a look at that prior to venturing into this particular video in this problem. So our example looks like this. It says, for each, and I do know how to spell, you guys, that is the word each, for each of the following sequences. Isn't it fun finding these little hidden Easter eggs of misspelled words? For each of the following sequences, find these three things. Number one, the next two terms of the sequence. Number two, a recursive definition that generates the sequence. And number three, an explicit formula for the nth term. There's a lot going on there. And so we want to break them down one by one. So let's look at part A first. Notice the braces notation for this sequence. A sub n is defined as the set of numbers negative 2 to 5 to 12 to 19. Now the first thing that you want to do is determine if this is what we call a well-behaved sequence. Well-behaved means that it's very predictable to find what you do to get from one term to the next. So if you go from negative 2 to 5, there's a lot of different ways you can think about that. Well, one way is the fact that you add 7. Well, you want to see if that's consistent. Are we doing the same thing to get from 5 to 12? And of course, the answer is a resounding yes. And once it's true for a pair, uh, two different pairs, then it's likely going to be true the rest of the way. So we actually have a special name for this. This is called an arithmetic sequence. It's actually pronounced with the accent on the, the uh, third syllable, arithmetic, not arithmetic. And because of this being an arithmetic sequence, we're going to have a pretty easy time working with it. Now you really don't need to know what an arithmetic sequence is in AP Calculus, and it's likely you may have already discussed this in a previous course leading up to calculus. So in any event, the next two terms of that sequence. Well, what I would say to do is you could just simply say, well, that would be the fifth term and the sixth term. So you could certainly write it like this if you wanted to. Another thing that you could do is just rewrite the entire sequence, the first four terms, and then add a pair of more terms if you want. A5 would just simply be what we get when we add 7 to our 19, which of course is going to be 26. And then if we add 7 more to 26, we're going to get 33. So that will answer letter I. Now we move on to II. And that is asking us to find the recursive definition. Now remember from our previous video, the recursive definition is the easy way. That's the way that just says all you need to do is state what the first term is, which in this case is certainly negative 2. And then you just make a statement that says that any nth plus 1 term is just simply the term before it, which is the nth term, a sub n, and then you add that common difference. And that's what we really think about that 7. That 7 is known as the difference. Even though it's something that you're adding, it's the change that you're, uh, the sequence is undergoing, a plus 7. And that's it. That's all you would do to write the recursive definition. Now, to write the more useful down the road explicit formula, what you could do is take our advice from the previous video and simply establish an ordered pair relationship. In other words, you take 1 as the first term and negative 2 as the term itself and pair that up with the second term, which is 5. You can use any pair of those points I typically use the first two because they're probably most often going to be the smaller numbers. So then you just find the slope, and we're doing our normal slope formula. I can even get by with calling it m, I suppose, for now. <laughs> and we end up with 7. Oh, well, what do you know? 7, that's the difference. 
Of course it is. Now, I know I called that m for slope, but I could also call it the d for the difference. And then you just simply take an ordered pair. I'll choose 1, negative 2, and you write your point slope formula. But instead of using y, I'm going to put a sub n in that place because that's really what the y's are. The a sub n term and the x is like the nth term. So we have a sub n minus the negative 2 would equal our difference 7 times n minus the n value, which is 1. Now if we clean this up just a little bit, I'll distribute the 7, and then I'll subtract the 2 over. I can finally state that this sequence has this formula, 7n minus 9. Let's take a look at part B. Part B's got a lot of similar characteristics, but we're dealing with a slightly different sequence here. So in this particular case, you still want to address the question, what is it that you do to get from a 3 to a 6? And the first thought might be, oh, we add 3, right? But notice that that is no longer the case. If we move from the 6 to the 12, we're not adding 3 anymore. And so usually by this time, students can probably see that we are actually multiplying by 2. And notice how that trend will continue. So this is another kind of special sequence that's well behaved that we will refer to as a geometric sequence. Whenever you multiply by a number, it's a geometric sequence, but with, with, whenever you're adding or subtracting, adding a negative, you have a arithmetic sequence. So how do you handle these? Well, they're going to be treated a little bit differently, especially when we get down to number three. But for the most part, step one and two are going to be similar. The next two terms would be what you get if you continue that multiplying. Now take note that this particular sequence provided us with five terms. So the next two terms would be the sixth term and the seventh term. And so if I double 48, I get 96. And if I double 96, well, that's a tough one, uh, you get 192. Pretty sure that's right. <laughs> All right, so then we go to Roman numeral two. A recursive definition. Well, really, it's handled very similarly. You do say that a1 is 3. Now you start thinking about what do you do for your a of n plus 1 term? Well, you're taking your a nth term and you're just multiplying it by 2. And that's really all that you would have to do to this. Now, something that I notice in this problem, and, it's, and it happens, and I can correct it. I, I, I've, I misspelled B throughout this problem, and it's not a big deal, and it's probably something that I wouldn't really uh, deduct points for, but one thing to keep in mind, because we are dealing with two different sequences in the same example, it's probably most important of all times now that we distinguish between them. So it's nice if you could really get a handle over what is the name of this sequence. Is it an A? Is it a B? And of course, this one is a B. So I apologize if you had to do some erasing there. All right, now I promise from this point on, I will stick with using B. Now you want to pay real close attention to this Roman numeral 3. An explicit formula for the nth term is a little tricky here because you cannot use anything that relies on the equation of a line because this thing is definitely not the equation of a line. This thing is a little bit more, well, geometric, right? So we have this really interesting relationship. You guys can tell probably that if you take a single term, let's say the the first term, you can multiply it by a 2, and that'll take you to the very next term. So does that mean that I could take a1 and just multiply that by my common value that I multiply, which is actually called the ratio? That's what we typically call that value that you're multiplying. Well, does that really work? Well, sort of, kind of. It's going to work for the first two terms, but 
we have a problem when we want to kind of relate this back to A1 as we move deeper into the sequence. And so the way that you're going to handle this is you can say that any term B sub n is just going to go back to your first term multiplied by 2. Well, can I just put the n there? Well, let's take a look. If you were to let n be 1 right off the bat, which is what we assume n is going to be unless we state otherwise, we have 3 times 2 to the first. Well, that's 6. That's not our first term. If we let n be 2, 3 times 4 is 12. That's our third term, not our second term. So all you got to do is scale this back. And you can scale it back by just putting a minus 1 after that n. And now it works beautifully. If you let n be 1, this 1 minus 1 becomes a 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. And boom, you've got your first term 3. And you'll notice how as n goes to 2 to 3 to 4, it works really well. Basically, a geometric series is very often defined as the first term times the ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. And if you can remember this, it's going to make your job a lot easier when you're finding the explicit formula for a recursive, or I'm sorry, for a geometric series. As far as the arithmetic series, or sequences I should say, you don't really have to worry about memorizing a formula because you've got the point slope probably memorized already. There's our example two. We're going to move into some other ideas in the next few examples about the limits of these sequences, so make sure that you stick around. Thanks for joining.